Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Kent for Friday, April 16th, 2021, brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. Come on, you need a great dentist. Call a great dentist. It's Mike O'Neill at Today's Dentistry. I started going there 27 years ago. I go every six months. You know why? Because it's an excellent investment of my time and my resources in making sure my dental health is well cared for. Give Dr. Mike a call, 317-849-2933. Hit subscribe, hit like, hit ring the bell, do all that stuff. Let's talk about sports. We're 13 days away from the NFL draft's first round, and I think that the Indianapolis Colts, if they participate in the first round at all, it's going to be late in the first round. I think they're going to trade back, and here's why. You've got three. They have two pressing needs. You need a left tackle. You got to have somebody. Sam Tevy isn't the guy to protect the backside of Carson Wentz. You need a starting left tackle. And you need an edge rush guy. Can you trust the guys that they have currently on the roster, whether it's Ben Banigou, Kamoko Ture, Taekwon Lewis, to be starting level edge guys? Danico Autry, gone. Signed elsewhere. Justin Houston, likely to sign elsewhere. Maybe he comes back with the Colts. But you need an edge guy. You need a left tackle. One pick at 21 is not going to get that done. And here at left tackle, you got three guys who are going to be taken earlier than 21. Panay Sewell out of Oregon is the best tackle in the draft. Second, you've got uh, behind Sewell, you've got Rashawn Slater from Northwestern. He's going to be taken early. And then you've got a guy who's kind of a, a tweener, sort of a tackle guard hybrid who can play one or the other. That's Elijah Vera Tucker out of USC. Those guys are going to be gone by the time the Colts get to 21, get to their pick. And then you got a bunch of guys who all have great uh, greatness, maybe in them, great athleticism, some of, the, some of them. And then you've got other guys without great athleticism, but with terrific technique. They're all kind of flawed in their own way. And so these guys are all relatively similar. And not all are going to be taken at 21 or immediately thereafter. So you can still trade back and get one of these guys. And these guys in the second tier, Sam Cosme out of Texas, he is an athletic freak. You've got Christian Derisaw, heavy hands out of Virginia Tech. Good guy, not a great guy, but he's in that second tier. He projects toward being a starter. You've got Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State, another guy who projects to be a starter, but you don't know whether he's going to be a better fit at left tackle or right tackle. He played a lot of right tackle at Oklahoma State. And then you've got Jalen Mayfield, who people are looking at, but he's a right tackle out of Michigan. You've got a third tier of guys after those guys are picked through, and they are Luke Eichenberg out of Notre Dame. Luke Eichenberg is a terrific technician, but he lacks athletic dynamism, all right? He doesn't have great feet. There's nothing great other than he is a well-practiced, very, very experienced left tackle. Uh, Dylan Rodens, um, who went to North North Dakota State, Dylan Rodens is a uh, another. He graded exceptionally well at the Senior Bowl. All right. So what do we know about him? We don't know a hell of a lot because he only played one game in 2020. North Dakota State played one game. So how is he developed? We're not really sure, although he did grade really well at the Senior Bowl. Then you've got uh, Alex Leatherwood out of Alabama. You don't really know whether he's going to be best as a tackle or a guard. Then you have another step down to guys with incredibly high upside and a really low floor. Guys who could wind up being a starting level left tackle who you can get potentially late Unless somebody sees something, all it takes is one general manager. It, all 32 general managers don't sit around a table and say, you know what, and, and vet these guys. You know what I mean? And say, yeah, he's a fourth best tackle. Somebody might look at a guy like Spencer Brown out of Northern Iowa and say, you know what, Spencer Brown, I think he's going to be terrific. And, and so they could take him in the second round, or he could fall to the fourth round. Uh, you've also got Walker Little, again. Graded really, really well at the Senior Bowl out of Stanford. But he hasn't played much football in a long time and really hasn't played much football at all. He's a, like you look at him, you grade his physique, 
his measurables, he is a really, really good potential, really, really good football player. We'll see if the Indianapolis Colts agree with that. You can trade back and get a starting level left tackle. So I think they may do that. You look at the edge guys, all the edge guys, some of them have great athleticism, some of them have, some of them have great technique. Nobody has both. No terrific like, my God, this guy is a game records, Jadevian Clowney coming out of school. We have got to take him. There is no definitive number one pick in this draft, and there's no definitive uh, top 10 pick in this draft. You got guys like Quiddy Pay, who's some grade in the top 10, some grade in the 20s. Quiddy Pay out of Michigan. Great athleticism, hasn't played a whole lot of football. They all have wards. Jalen Phillips was told by the UCLA medical staff to retire from the game because of concussions. He went to Miami last year, and he really played well. You've got another guy from Miami, Gregory Russo, who has great athleticism, but he hadn't played a whole lot of football, and his technique is sloppy. He is a project. You've got Jason Away from Penn State. This guy is an athletic monster. He ran a 4 3 9 40, weighs 260-plus pounds, but zero sacks last year for Penn State. None. Never got to the quarterback. What's he doing? Go back to Quiddy Pay for a second. Quiddy Pay, nine sacks in his Michigan career in uh, 670 pass rush snaps. What does that tell you? I don't know what it tells It tells me the guy's not great. The guy, you're not going to take him at eight or nine or ten. And you got others. I mean, I could go on. Joe Tryon of Washington. Joe Tryon is a violent defensive end, but that's all he is. All of the defensive ends, all the edge guys, a lot of them have great flash, but no technique. Some have technique and, and really kind of lack that dynamic athleticism. So who knows? what You're going to be able to get somebody who's going to be able to help you in two years, right? But you're not going to be able to get anybody who's going to be dynamic out of the chute day one because they've got to either learn the position or they've got to figure out how to compensate for a lack of athleticism. This is a tough draft. And sticking at 21 lowers your opportunity to get a terrific player because you're only drafting one guy with that 21st pick. If you trade back and you get a second rounder plus a third or maybe two seconds, maybe a second this year, a second next year, a fourth this year, then you've got more chips on the table and you have more opportunities to cash in. It's all about numbers. There's an actuarial table for the NFL draft. What are the odds you're going to get a championship caliber player? And let's not forget at left tackle, you could have uh, Quentin Nelson. Well, look, at the guard position, if, if you're paying a guard really, really well, here, the top five guards in the NFL come from the Washington football team, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Dallas Cowboys, the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's one, three, four, and five. Those are not great football teams. Those are not playoff football teams. The second, however, is the Chiefs. It, it, you go back to the Bill Polian kind of uh, analytics. How are we going to allocate our cap money against this roster? He didn't pay guards ever. So if you're, if you're a guard for you, even a Hall of Fame guard, potentially, like Quentin Nelson, if he's a guy that you're going to invest $18 million a year in, then you're not paying somebody else at $18 million. And what Bill Polian would do, he'd pay a left tackle, he'd pay a center, he'd pay a right tackle. He didn't pay guards. He didn't pay linebackers. Linebackers came and went. We remember, right? Cato June, Marcus Washington, bunch of guys came in, plug and play at linebacker, and then off they went as free agents. He didn't invest in those positions. Wide receiver, quarterback, he invested in. He had a tried and true model for where to invest money, and guard was not one of those positions. So if you can move Quentin Nelson out to left tackle, if you can move him three feet and have him be one of the better left tackles in the NFL, you do that because you cannot pay four offensive linemen serious dollars 
or you're going to sacrifice elsewhere and you can't do it. The models just don't work. Um, Indiana coaches are talking. Kenya Hunter spoke to the media yesterday. He really likes Mike Woodson. Happy to be staying at Indiana. He just moved his family to Bloomington last August. Uh, was very happy to be a part of the transition team. Says that Mike Woodson is going to go up tempo, but that doesn't mean, you know, outlet jack a three. That's not what it means. It means take an early shot if you got it. If you've got an open shot, you're going to be expected to take it, and you're going to be expected to make it. That's what you got to do. Indiana is going to be a better shooting team, according to Kenya Hunter, because, number one, how could they not be? And number two, especially from the line, I mean, my God, 62, 3%, that's pathetic. 66%, pathetic. Archie Miller's teams, you want to know why he's out of work? Because his teams couldn't shoot the ball well. If you can't shoot, you can't play. It's that easy. Indiana is going to have shooters. The teams that Mike Woodson played on that were really good had guys who could put the ball in the bucket. You think about historically Indiana teams that succeeded, what did they have? They had shooters. They had Kitchell, Whitman, May, Wilkerson. Um, you had Alford, obviously. You had Cheney. You, you had great shooters. You need great shooters. Shoot, there is nothing more important in basketball than shooting a rock. If you cannot make shots, you cannot win games, and we saw that from Indiana the last five years. Let's not lay it all on Archie Miller, Tom Crean's last team. Wasn't a good shooting team. If you shoot well, you're going to win games. If you don't shoot well, you're going to lose games. Basketball's an easy game. This isn't calculus, for God's sake. This is basic math. That's Look, basketball, you can complicate it all you want with offensive sets and, and getting very, very specific in how you want movement, and that's a good thing. But at the end of the day, you've got to shoot it to win, and you've got to keep the other guys from shooting high-percentage shots also. Uh, Pacers at Utah, a matinee, 3 in the afternoon on a Friday. <laughs> what the hell are they doing? That means that they're playing at 1 o'clock in Utah. This is not good for the Pacers. Utah, the number one team in the West, uh, Indiana going on the road. Nobody gets psyched to play in Salt Lake City. It's in altitude. You're playing in the afternoon. Feels like an AAU game, for God's sake. We'll see what the Pacers are able to do this afternoon. Nate Bjorkman's got to close some games. He's got to show that strategically he can draw something up and, and lift the Pacers' opportunity to win late in games. Uh, there was a brawl at, at Westfield, a girls' basketball travel game, and uh, a, a referee got body slammed, and then a player was punching the referee while that referee was on the ground. What the hell is going on with people? I'll tell you what, you got to have police on hand and you got to lead people away in handcuffs. You got to start arresting people for their behavior at these tournaments because they've allowed bit by bit by bit parent and player behavior to become really, really problematic. Organizers, they don't want players arrested, they don't want coaches and parents arrested, but I think that that's where we are. Because you, you've got you've to draw a line and say, beyond this, we cannot go. You, you, it's a travel game, for God's sake. And you've got a referee being pummeled? What the hell is the matter with our society? Are we insane? When I was a kid, when some of you were kids, our parents went to games and they read books. They didn't care what the result was. They were there to shuttle us back and forth. They didn't care what we did. Hey, did you make a shot? Yeah, I made a shot. Didn't you see? Nah. You know? Come on. Um, Cubs, they had the day off, so nobody expected them to hit well yesterday. They didn't. That was fine because they had the day off. Uh, the Fever, they drafted Kaiser uh, Gondrasek out of West Virginia. Averaged 19 points a game. I, I don't watch West Virginia women's basketball, so I have no idea what she does. They drafted seven players. ESPN graded the draft as a D. That's not great. Uh, but they did what they did, and we love Tamika Catching, so we believe that she drafted well and that the Fever are going to be very competitive this year as the season commences in just about a month. Uh, let's celebrate some birthdays, shall we? What a breakfast this has been. This has been fantastic. Not doing it from the toilet today. We did Inside Indiana Sports now from the toilet. The toilet is only utilized 
well, we got to do heavy thinking. And yesterday we had to do some heavy thinking as we talked about fit and how it relates to hiring, management, coaches, people like that, as well as players in sports and in business. you got to hire to fit. It's not all about the resume. So says the career uh, C-plus student. Resume, I wasn't getting hired because of a resume, but because of fit, I fit. That's why you get hired. Uh, Joe Kelly, happy birthday. Frank DeBortolo, happy birthday. Uh, Aisha Dubois, happy birthday. Uh, Brad Carson, Greg Jennings, Julie, of course, loves Aisha. Uh, wonderful woman, works at today's dentistry. The great Jordan Hulls, talk about a kid who could stroke it. The 2013 Hoosiers, what did they have? They had some guys who could shoot. This is why they were Big Ten champs. Christ, uh, Christina Ortiz, happy birthday. The great Vanessa Marie, celebrating birthday. Adam Austin, happy birthday. If today's your birthday, you celebrate like hell. Hello, Kurt. Lovely to have you along today. Um, if today's your birthday, you celebrate like hell. If it's not your birthday, you celebrate somebody else. That's best done with an honest and specific compliment. If you want to celebrate someplace today, take a little bit of time. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon. High in the low 60s. Head to the dugout downtown on the uh, kind of on the southeast side. Go down there, watch a Pacers game three o'clock, have some cold beverages, and enjoy yourself. I may do that myself. Uh, we will talk to you this afternoon, maybe from the dugout. Who knows? Frank Thompson, how you doing? And uh, yeah, because we got to enjoy this. We had bad weather. We had the COVID. Let's move forward and have some fun, shall we? I think we shall.